California was really excited. We got a $22.1 million grant from the FCC for the new California Telehealth Network. And what we're planning to do is to link up 319 sites throughout California. And essentially, the bulk of them are University of California teaching hospitals, rural healthcare sites, um, public hospitals, and some facilities out on tribal lands. So it will allow um, our providers to give really state-of-the-art telehealth and telemedicine applications. And more, most importantly, we have a lot of rural healthcare clinics who are not able to provide specialty services. And so with the new California Telehealth Network, these rural facilities will be able to provide specialty services without making their patients drive sometimes hours to an urban center where they could have a specialist look at them. Well, I'm very concerned about net neutrality. Um, I have just given a speech talking about the many flavors of net neutrality because the more I ask advocates of net neutrality of what they mean by the phrase, they give me probably five, six different answers. So I'm worried about it just because to me what it boils down to is trying to layer kind of old-fashioned common carrier telephone regulations on a very vibrant internet and it doesn't make any sense to me to put that type of regulations on um, the internet. Uh, I am concerned about what internet uh, net neutrality regulations could do to our telehealth network because we are looking at a very aggressive build out over three years of this network and it's really important to the state. Well, I think it might be a damper on investment in California, and right now California has gone to great trouble to provide a um, very competitive marketplace for our providers. So, for example, in 06, the legislature approved a statewide video franchise authority allowing AT&T and Verizon to build fiber-based networks to provide television service. And the California PUC deregulated telephone rates with the exception of basic rate um, and we did that also to give more freedom to the marketplace. And finally, uh, we have been working hard to promote uh, broadband in all of California and so we're concerned that more regulations might dissuade the large companies, both the telephone companies, the cable companies, the wireless companies, from coming to California and building out the whole state. But particularly, you know, we are worried about rural, remote areas, also disadvantaged and economic, economically depressed areas such as South Central Los Angeles, East Palo Alto. These are all concerns of ours. Yeah, we were really excited. Um, the California Broadband Task Force did put out a report and it did find that 96% of households do have access in California. But, of course, our work isn't done. We do intend to get broadband to the last 4%, and that does represent 2,000 mostly rural communities. So um, California has done something quite unique. The PUC in December voted on a new fund called the California Advanced Service Fund, and we are setting up a $100 million fund for infrastructure grants for any carrier, any broadband provider, regardless of whether the phone company, the cable company, or a wireless provider to come and serve these unserved and underserved areas in California. And we're basically doing a matching fund proposal where the PUC will put in 40% of the funds and the carrier would fund the other 60%. And we're hoping that will help get the last 4% linked up to the net.